Jaclyn Hill finally launched her long-awaited beauty brand and people are not happy with it. Before I get into the tea, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Jaclyn Hill, Raw Beauty Christie, That Girl Shay, Marlena Stell, or anyone else mentioned in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give insight on the situation. Also, this is the first part in a three-part series. Please wait until you see the full story before you form an opinion on what went down. With that out of the way, let's get into the tea. Back on November 3rd, 2014, Jaclyn Hill announced she was creating her own makeup line. Yes, the rumors are true. I am creating my own makeup line. It won't be released for a long time because I'm doing it all on my own. Over the next five years, Jaclyn gave sporadic updates on the progress of her brand, changing the launch date several times. Then, on May 22, 2019, she published a video titled Introducing Jaclyn Cosmetics. In the video, she announced her brand's first launch, a collection of 20 nude lipsticks to suit every skin tone. She also said the collection would be available to purchase on May 30th at 9 a.m. PST and 12 p.m. EST. On May 30th, the lipsticks were live on the Jaclyn Cosmetics website, but the launch didn't go smoothly. A few people noticed the website was charging them the wrong tax amount based on where they lived. Drama account GG Spill the Tea shared a couple of screenshots that showed the tax amount staying the same, despite the people ordering the lipsticks living in different places. However, when Gigi Spill the Tea checked herself, she said the amount being charged for taxes was correct. There were also issues with the checkout process itself. Beauty YouTuber Raw Beauty Christy tweeted about her experience purchasing the lipsticks. The Jaclyn Hill website told me I wouldn't lose my place in line, and then I clicked pay and it kicked me off, then told me my items were no longer available, but I was checking out at 9.01. A few other influencers replied to her tweet saying they were having the same experience. After she made her purchase, Christy tweeted, After 21 minutes in checkout land, I finally got through. The price makes me want to throw up and scream, but at least you guys will get a review. Jacqueline saw this tweet and replied, Girl, you're on my PR list. You'll be receiving it tomorrow. Christy responded, OMG, LOL. First of all, thank you so much. I had no idea. Second, I'm about to have a whole lot of lipsticks. This is out of the ordinary. Normally, PR is sent out to influencers a few days before a product launch. This gives the influencer time to try the product and make a video about it, allowing the consumer to see video reviews before deciding if they should buy the product. Jacqueline sent out a tweet addressing why no influencers received PR before her launch. Just to clear things up, my PR packages were supposed to be delivered to influencers several days before my launch. There is an issue that delayed them till tomorrow, and I've been very upset about it, but it won't happen again. Still learning as I go. Meanwhile, some people paid for their orders, only to have them cancelled immediately afterwards. My order was placed at 12.03pm, minutes after it launched. I got a confirmation email. Money was taken from my account, and then I received this? Really? Cool. Other people were having issues with shipping. While some customers were receiving their products the day after placing their orders, other people were waiting for days for their orders to ship. I ordered on the launch day, which was four days ago, and still have no shipping details, while others already have their lipsticks in hand. I bought these for a review, and now it won't get any views, since by the time I get them, they'll be old news. I love and have followed you for years, but I want my money back. One of my lipsticks came broken, paid extra for shipping, and got them after people who didn't pay extra. Customers who live outside the United States were hit with large international shipping fees. I love you, girl, but 20 US dollars for international shipping is a bit much. I'd be paying $50 Canadian for one lipstick. $20 for international shipping to Canada, plus the exchange rate, for a total of $52 for a lipstick, and that's not even counting import duties. Thank you, next, Jaclyn Hill. I purchased from other US brands and never got ripped off like this. And one person who lives in Spain wasn't even able to order the lipsticks. I couldn't, because Spain is not international, or it seems to be so. Jaclyn Cosmetics replied, Unfortunately, some countries like Spain have different rules, regulations, customs requirements that don't allow us to ship there at this time. We're working hard to find a solution that will allow us to ship there in the future. The person wrote back, You had five years to figure that out. 
But most importantly, if it isn't going to be international, don't say so when we ask before launch. I had so much hype for nothing. Now I'm so disappointed that I don't think I'm going to be buying something soon. Jacqueline Cosmetics responded, Jacqueline didn't know that certain countries were so rigid and has her team hard at work on a solution for the few places we currently can't ship. Every country is different and it's very complicated. All we can say is we are doing our absolute best to make sure everyone can order. Once customers started receiving their lipsticks, Several people said their lipsticks were melted or broken. Very disappointed. Both my lipsticks came in melted and broken. Really sad that when I got my package in the mail today, all the lipsticks are broken. I've been waiting and waiting for their arrival. Had to wait longer than everyone, I'm guessing because I'm in Texas. I was home when UPS dropped off. I know you guys are super busy, but my lipsticks all came broken in the mail. Can someone please reach out? I've emailed twice as well but the problems didn't end there. Several customers reported issues with the actual product. Some lipsticks broke while customers were using them. Use my lipsticks for the first time today and it crumbled, so upset. As soon as that girl touches my lips, it broke. Other people said the lipsticks had a gritty texture. I'm so confused. I just received my Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks today and after one use noticed all these lumps. I'm scared, Jaclyn Hill. What the f is this? Is there a way to get replacement lipsticks? I got the nude moment trio today, and all of them have this grainy stuff in them. This is the shade That Girl, and after one use it looks like this. A few people appear to find pieces of plastic in their lipsticks. Your lipsticks are safe to use. For real though? I was so excited to buy your lipsticks. Today when I went to put on decaf, I noticed there is a hard ball inside of it. What is it? Can I get a replacement? Shard of plastic found in my Isla? What the is going on with your lipsticks? Why do we not have answers? Can I send all of mine back and get a full refund? I think I got a bad batch. My lippy that girl is crumbling and applying chunky and has what looks like small beads coming out of it and my perfectionist lippy was slightly melted and breaking. Several customers found fuzzies on their product. What the f are these little hairs? They have beading hairs too. So far six out of my nine lipsticks are okay, but what the f is this? and some customers had allergic reactions from using their lipsticks. Woke up with a terrible reaction after wearing fussy for just a few hours yesterday. All of my lipsticks are grainy, hairy, and smell weird. Do not use these, they aren't safe. This is what happens when you try on lipstick without even looking at the lipstick first. Lesson learned, because now my lips are swollen and I have to be on antibiotics. My lips are completely swollen and dry as f They've had a severe reaction to the damn lipsticks, hence this brown line on my top lip. You should be ashamed of yourself, Jacqueline Hill. In a now deleted tweet, one person said they cut their lip on metal found in one of the lipsticks. 10 minutes after a sharp metal object in as if cut my lip open, it became so swollen and six days later it is still swollen, painful, and now has a huge hard lump developing from this cut. Even influencers were sharing their experience with their lipsticks. YouTuber Brianna Fox posted a video on Twitter showing her pulling out a long hair from inside the lipstick. Posted part of this vid on my IG story and I'm already getting called names for it. I realized the more I swatched, the more crap would come to the surface. And Raw Beauty Christie posted a picture that appeared to show hair growing out of the lipstick. All I can say is, what the f People also started posting videos about the products. Beauty YouTuber and chemist Angie Bergs talked about why the lipsticks might look the way they do based on the pictures she'd seen. She addressed the melting issue first, saying the formula may not have enough waxy ingredients keeping it together. Pretty much all the ingredients are not solid or they're like a liquidy solid until you get up to the fifth ingredient, which is pretty much mango butter. But mango butter will melt at 86 degrees Fahrenheit and we know throughout the US a lot of places are reaching above 90, even 100, and those trucks can get even hotter. Putting mango butter, it melts easily and it applies smoothly on the lips because obviously it's gonna heat up when you apply it to your lips, which is great, but the problem is since this is the first pretty much solid ingredient in this formula, it is, it's making this lipstick very, very fragile. And she said the beading issue could also be blamed on the mango butter. So this is a very common issue with shea butter, which is also in this formula, mango butter, and other vegetable butters. This is because these products were heated up and they were not cooled rapidly. If they're melting inside of a truck, 
and they come back down to room temperature, it's a very slow process. It's not like these things are being cooled down immediately. They are crystallizing into these little grains and that could explain the sharpness too. Several influencers, including Naima Tang, Nicole Concilio, and Stephanie Lange also made videos about their lipsticks. But two of the most notable videos on the subject were from Batgirl Shay and Raw Beauty Christy. Both YouTubers wanted to like the lipsticks and went in with an open mind, but they discovered problems with the lipsticks as their videos progressed. In Batgirl Shay's video, she tried on all the shades and noticed problems with several of the shades. She said nearly all the shades had a gritty texture. What's interesting is I kind of feel like I see like little lines going through the lipstick. When I look at the lipstick, again, there's more of that scratchy texture on it. And I just don't understand because my lips are so freaking exfoliated and smooth right now. Ugh, there are those bumps again. Shay also noticed a few shades had melted or tilted. Decaf looks like it's breaking and melting at the base of it. Oh my god, it's all, as I'm applying it, it's also melting and sliding to the side and it's like smooshing into it. As I'm applying it, it feels like it's tilting. Yep, it's tilting a bit. She said the shade Amazeballs had a strange smell. I prefer the generic smell. This one smells a little Play-Doh-y, like there's something a little weird about it. She found a small fiber in the shade Hustle. This one has a weird little fiber thingy stuck to the side of it and I know it didn't just like happen because as I was twisting it up I saw it. And she saw bubbles in the shade Nude AF. Could just be air bubbles. I don't know if that's normal. Oh god. Ugh. If you don't like holes don't look at these photos. Oh wow the tip looks crazy. My goodness what is that? In Raw Beauty Christie's video, she compared the lipsticks she purchased and the lipsticks she received in PR, and she noticed she had more issues with the purchased lipsticks. When she started seeing problems with her lipsticks, she examined several of them under her microscope. She started her experiment by looking at two non Jaclyn Hill lipsticks to see what a regular lipstick should look like. Doesn't have any hairs, doesn't have any holes. Whatever that little line is, but other than that, it looks pretty normal. Then she examined the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks with the most issues. This is what Christy saw when she examined Decaf, the hairy shade she posted about on Twitter. This is the actual hairiest one. I don't know what these hairs are, but we are about to find out. That is absolutely mortifying. What are these hairs? What the f is that? What is that? She also looked at a shade that had a spot on the top of the tube. It doesn't look like mold or anything. It's hard to tell. This is not a scientific way to do this at all because this is just like a magnification microscope, you know? Oh my god. If anyone has trypophobia, tell me that doesn't just you up right there, dude. And she examined a shade that had a black hair in it. Hmm. What is that? Christy was also curious about the beads she found in her lipsticks and looked at them under the microscope. It's a perfect little circle, whatever it is. Let me see if I can smash it. All right, so I smashed it open and that's what it looks like. I don't know what the f that is. While she was examining the lipsticks, she called out the lab that made them. Yuck, dude. This place should be just ashamed. Ashamed. Oh, God. People were shocked when they saw Christie's video. Yikes that PR lipsticks are noticeably better than the purchased ones. To me, that lends a lot of credibility to theory that Jacqueline knew about all the problems with the lipsticks and is now feigning surprise. This is horror movie levels of gross. My theory is that, like people are saying, they're really old and were sitting around, and the PR ones were made recently. When customers started reporting their issues online, several people thought the lipsticks were old or expired. Since Jacqueline announced her brand in 2014, she's talked about the lipsticks being in production in business emails and on social media. In 2015 and 2016, two Jacqueline Hill fan pages posted pictures that appeared to show components that look very similar to her current components. In May 2016, Jacqueline appeared to tease one of her lipsticks in a video. Coming in 2017. In June 2016, a fan asked Jacqueline 
With your future makeup line, are highlighters in the works? Jacqueline replied, not yet, but I will say, I have some things in production that are literally the most amazing formula I've ever used. In April 2017, a fan tweeted, isn't Jacqueline Hill launching her own makeup line? Or did I dream that? Or did we all just forget? But for real, when is that happening? Jacqueline said, yes, girl. I just went into production last month. In September 2017, someone asked Jacqueline, will your brand still be launching this year? Jacqueline replied, 50-50, it's not about me at this point. My lipsticks are at the lab and ready to go. There's a lot that goes into starting a brand. In November 2017, Jacqueline tweeted out a photo of a defective lab sample. This is the most unsatisfying lipstick I have ever seen. I seriously cringe so hard over small holes. What the f***? Who else? In June 2018, Jacqueline filmed a Q&A with James Charles where she talked about her brand. It's a whole nother level when it comes to my actual brand. That is my brand, like from beginning to end because the tiniest thing is gonna fall on my back. When it's your own brand and if one tiny thing goes wrong, like it's all on you. I'm such a perfectionist that it really scares me. I'm finally getting to the point where I'm like, I just need to launch the products that I have because mm -hmm. I literally have products that have been created. They're ready to be filled and they're ready to go. I'm just like, ah, because I overthink everything. But the first launch is gonna be absolutely incredible and I can not wait. Later in 2018, Drama Channel's Tea by Ally, Here for the Tea, and Tea Spill leaked emails between Jacqueline and a makeup geek employee. Jacqueline was supposed to release a palette with the company, but it never happened. In one of those emails, dated August 19th, 2015, Jacqueline said she ordered 300,000 lipstick components for her cosmetics brand. Someone also remembered a live stream Jacqueline did in 2017 where she talked about her lipsticks. Someone asked her if she was launching her brand soon, and if I recall correctly, Jacqueline said that yes, she is going to and that the lipsticks were all ready to go and had been for a bit. If memory serves, she said that they were just having hangups with other things, but that the product itself was ready. I remember even thinking, isn't it bad for makeup to sit for an extended period of time? And a few people thought she delayed the launch because of her divorce. The lipsticks are old. I think they were ready for release ages ago, but Jacqueline delayed the launch of her brand so that her ex wouldn't get any money from it during the divorce, so they've been sitting in a warehouse somewhere. There's a theory she made this years ago prior to the divorce, held off on release until the divorce was finalized, then launched, which would also explain the inconsistencies in the name, logo of JH on the lipsticks and Jacqueline Cosmetics on the website. Other people thought the lipsticks people were receiving now were ready to be sold years ago. I am 100% convinced that these lipsticks were produced in 2013-2014, long before the name brand change, and is just trying to recoup losses by selling these even though they're expired. Is it possible that her lipsticks passed quality control a few years ago, but sat in boxes for a long time? I could imagine them not having issues when they were originally made, but as time goes on they broke down and now there's nasty coming out of the product. She probably did have the lipsticks for years, but the girl had way too many collabs contractually restricting her from releasing. There were also concerns about the formula itself. Someone pointed out that mango butter only has a shelf life of one year. Mango butter is supposedly only shelf stable for a year, as well as butters being very rarely used in lipsticks. It's a bad idea on multiple, well-documented fronts. A few people said other old lipsticks they had didn't look like Jacqueline's. I've definitely found some old used cosmetics from my own collection, and at most, they only ever smell weird. I still have a couple MAC lipsticks purchased in 2014, and they're perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. There is something wrong with her formula. A few people had theories about the beads and balls in the lipsticks. In my opinion, the clear balls are binders that never melted fully. They're too perfectly round to be clumping up on their own. It really looks like the stuff you can buy yourself if you're making lipstick from scratch. So basically, they fail to even mix and melt the formula down right. The formula isn't stable over time and has pilled congealed, leading to the balls and holes. The ones in Mom look more metallic, and they didn't melt. So I wonder if they're beads used for mixing the formula. Think the ball bearing type things in nail polish bottles used to help suspend everything. And we're not removed moved before pouring and some people suspected there was mold growing in the lipsticks. If they were fibers, I would expect them to be embedded in the product where, if, the product was handled by humans after hardening. These are clusters on the edge tip of the lipstick that are growing outwards. That looks like hyphae or filamentous fibers from mold or fungus. This can't be just from human handling after manufacturing or it would not be spawning outward from the lipstick. 
I'm concerned that the moisture spots may be at risk for growing mold. Realistically, probably not pathogenic, but not pleasant either, lol. I'm a PhD student studying molecular and cellular biology with a track in biochemistry. I strongly believe that what we are seeing is fungal spores. This is very similar to what spores look like coming from a creamy product. They shoot out these fibers to help spread themselves. This is purely from the pictures, so I can be and hope I am wrong. In my opinion, these are very old lipsticks that have expired and created a perfect incubation for spores. People were confused about the batch codes as well. Most cosmetic products have a batch code that indicate when a product was made. For example, an eyeshadow palette could have several different batch codes that represent each time a batch of that palette was made. Batch codes are also useful when there's a problem with the product. If several blushes have an issue, the company can easily track the affected products through their batch codes. With Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks, there only seems to be one batch code on all the shades, which isn't standard practice. Different shades should each have their own batch code. Jaclyn's are all the same. There had to be at least 20 batches for 20 shades, but you can't prove it now. If she had the original batch info, she'd only need to recall the ones that were affected, but with one code, they all should be recalled. Industry professionals started weighing in on the issue. Nikia Joy, a brand influencer who has her own cosmetics brand, said the lipsticks were contaminated. It's contaminated, like I guarantee it's contaminated. Um, I've worked with so many labs now. It's a contaminated lipstick. Nikia said there are good and bad labs in every country. Guys, you can have bad labs anywhere. It doesn't matter what country. Germany, Italy, US, here in Australia or China, there are good labs and there are bad labs. Now it is your responsibility as a brand owner to actually properly research your labs, to test, to you know, get to know them, to meet with them, to tour the facilities, to really, really nut out who you are working with so that you know all of the safety aspects, all the certifications, all the regulations, the environment, the cleanliness. There are real, like there are a bunch of bad labs in America that aren't following regulations. I know because I've, I've seen it. And there are plenty of labs in China that are absolutely amazing, that follow safety to an absolute T, that follow regulations to a T. She said the lipstick situation is a public health issue. Issue. Mold is seriously dangerous. Contaminants are seriously dangerous. Like makeup is absorbed through the skin and especially with the lipstick, like you're essentially ingesting this. It's a serious public health issue. Like truly it's a safety issue. Nikia said brand owners have to do their own quality control. It is your responsibility to pull a random, like like a control sample it's usually referred to, like a random, and it's, and it's usually about 10% of the products, to an external facility, quality control it with an external team. Because as if the lab is gonna be truthful, oh yeah, our products are fine, you you know, you're paying them. And she accused Jacqueline of lying to her audience. Now, like I said, I understand how hard this would be. I understand the pain, assumedly, that she must be feeling, um, but you cannot lie to people. You cannot lie to people like that. Like, it is just so wrong to take money, for, to firstly to make promises to people, then to take money from people, and then to lie to people. You cannot lie to people. Like, it just, it truly blows my mind. Like, just, just know, that is not correct. Kevin James Bennett, an Emmy award-winning makeup artist and cosmetics developer, spoke out on the lipstick situation. Bottom line, Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks are contaminated, a health hazard, and not safe for use. There is no other way to sugarcoat or shape the narrative. The fact that Jaclyn has not issued a formal statement warning people not to use them is disturbing and reckless. I'd like to thank Jaclyn Hill and Jaclyn Cosmetics because without your dumpster fire of and lies, people like me wouldn't have a reason to educate the general public about legitimate hygienic cosmetic manufacturing. Your dishonesty has facilitated learning. He also shared information on YouTuber Jen Loves Reviews' weekly live stream. Kevin said he thought the lipsticks were old. I strongly feel that these have been sitting in a warehouse since 2017 when she announced that the lab had everything ready and she was ready to go. So that would explain spores, mold, whatever building on these. It would also explain that slight little Crayola Crayon Play-Doh scent that some people are getting. I don't believe that the top influencers got these lipsticks. They probably did pilot badges at the lab and sent out brand new stuff to them. Because we do that for press in, in laboratories all the time. He said the lab he thinks Jacqueline used had a scandal with another makeup product. So um, I have a strong suspicion that the people, and that also could be why, remember that her PR went out late and she was upset about it? Yes. I get the strange feeling that those 20 colors of lipstick were not ready on time in pilot batches and she was terrified 
are sending out the bad lipsticks with the lipsticks that have been sitting around. Oh. So, uh, okay. They, they were in fact made in California. Myself and three other people that work in the industry are pretty sure we know which lab it is, and I can't, you know, say for sure, but um, it's a lab that is used by other people, and there was a scandal a couple of years ago about someone's highlighters having some errors in them or whatever, and those came from the same lab. Oh my gosh. So what and Marlena Stell a beauty YouTuber and the CEO of Makeup Geek, the brand that had a failed collab with Jacqueline, posted a thread on the situation. What I have said and continue to say never comes from a malicious place, and I never wish anyone anything but success for their careers. But at the end of the day, honesty and integrity are king and will make your career and company last longer. My right to speak up is based off 11 plus years behind the scenes manufacturing makeup. I visited and or worked with every major lab in the US as as well as Canada, and have personally developed products with chemists myself. I've spent years and hundreds of hours in labs personally. I've seen quality issues in the cream concealer set to launch two years ago. I scratched the entire line when I received my final batches because I knew the integrity of the product was compromised. The concealers had hairs in them, fingerprints, shards of plastic, and more. My team did personal quality checks when product arrived, as we always do before we ship to customers. After seeing 60% of the concealers not pass our quality control, I pulled the plug. I can do a video showing them as I still have a few. It was yet another reason why Makeup Geek did not launch new items two years ago. I never spoke on it because of being accused of making up excuses as to why Makeup Geek did not launch anything new or exciting for a while. I made that choice to pull the concealers and foundation that came from the same lab with quality issues. Did it cost us potential millions in sales? Yes, it did. But it could have permanently ruined the company's reputation long term. All of this to say, if there are shards of anything sharp in a cream product, that is not ingredients melting and solidifying. That is massive production issues where sterile environments have not been kept. If there's fingerprints on the sides of components, the production did not wear gloves. If there are hairs and cream products, no ingredient used in cosmetics mimic hairs other than the fibers used in fiber mascaras. Even Angie Berg's the the chemist who made a video about the formula unlisted her original video and said she wasn't sure the lipsticks were safe. So much more has come out that I can't give her, I can't give her that benefit of the doubt anymore because now all of these could potentially be contaminated. And after Raw Beauty Christie's video went viral in the beauty community, she posted a statement on Twitter. Guys, my video got way more attention than I ever thought it would, and while I stand by what I said completely, I have to believe that this is a lab and manufacturing issue. Jacqueline made it clear in her announcement video that she is proud of her brand and wanted her name attached so people would know that it is hers and that it is the quality she stands by. I just have a hard time believing in any way that she would knowingly release this quality that directly reflects her name and image. I am sure this is devastating for her. I think this is a big lesson for everyone involved, and in my my opinion, the lab is the issue here. I feel that yes, Jacqueline needs to address it publicly and talk about everything candidly and openly. And I am sure we will hear some answers soon. I just can't imagine that anyone would knowingly release faulty products like this as their dream launch. Yes, it is her brand. And yes, it's the name of the game, dealing with criticism and issues as they arise. But I'm just trying to be realistic and fair here. I just feel that she was shown quality product, and when the product was scaled up in production, there was massive issues and loss quality. I feel quality control wasn't done properly, and now we are seeing the results of that. Maybe I am wrong, but instead of assumptions, I hope it is all cleared up soon and remedied from all parties involved. While all this was going on, Jacqueline was responding to customers on Twitter. One person asked her a question about the grittiness in her lipstick. Why is my Jacqueline Cosmetics decaf lipstick lumpy? This can't be okay, right? Jacqueline replied to this tweet. You posted swatches two days ago loving the lipsticks. Now you're wondering why it's lumpy? It's obvious this lipstick is used and not fresh from factory. Like any other lipstick, if you use it over other products, have dry lips, etc., things like this can happen. She later deleted the tweet. That girl Shay addressed this tweet in her video about the lipsticks when she started noticing the gritty texture. What will really annoy me about this is I feel like Jacqueline kind of came at that girl. And th if this is real, which I mean, it's it's happening to me, Jacqueline should not have attacked her because there's no way this is your makeup brand and you say you've gone through a bunch of these lipsticks already, it's all you've been wearing and that you didn't notice this. There's no way she didn't notice this. And I just think her response was really unfair if this is like a known issue. Someone shared a screen 
screenshot of the tweet and wrote, she already deleted that tweet. But no worries, baby. I got the screenshot. Own your <laughs> Jacqueline. What the f are you afraid of, huh? Jacqueline responded, I'm not afraid of anything, but I realized that it seemed much more harsh than it sounded in my mind, so I deleted it. I'm not running from anything, honestly. The person replied, then address the situations your customers are bringing to light. Apologize to them since they're the ones who keep you in the privileged position you are now. Don't go answering their genuine concerns with snotty behavior. Be a woman and own up to your mistakes. Jacqueline wrote back, I just realized your profile photo is my face. Girl, what is going on? Drama channel here for the tea replied to Jacqueline. There are other cases of this happening. It's not like this is an isolated incident. Pretty way to deal with a paying customer of your new brand. Damn. Jacqueline said, honest to God, I have not seen one other person complain about this and I take my reviews very seriously. It's obvious the lipstick was used. You could see other product on top. And since her first review was great, it's hard to know the actual issue. If you have seen any other issue like this, please send with photos and I will of course address it. I'm sorry if I came off defensive, truly. The original customer tweeted at Jacqueline, I wasn't trying to be a jerk or anything. The lipsticks are the best. I just really wanted an answer because I've never experienced that before. Plus, the other four I received have no issues. A few days later, Jacqueline tweeted, I want to thank you all for the unbiased feedback on my lipstick collection. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Every comment or concern that has been brought to my attention has not been taken lightly. My team and I are working non-stop to address any and all issues you may be having. I'm so sorry if the product you received was anything less than perfect. If you are unsatisfied in any way, please contact help at JacquelineCosmetics.com and we will be sure to give you a full refund as well as send you a new product. I stand behind my brand and will do whatever it takes to make sure my customers are satisfied. I am so grateful for your constant love, support, and patience that you have given me. Someone said to Jacqueline, I can only imagine how this has put such a damper on your first launch, but I'm happy to say it's 100% exactly how you expressed they'd be, and I truly believe it's a hiccup, not a representation of your product as a whole. Jacqueline replied, Oh, trust me, I'm learning as I go and will make sure this never happens again. The day after she tweeted her first statement, Jacqueline wrote, My team and I are working very hard on finding out exactly what what is causing the grittiness and bumpy texture on some of my lipsticks. I am so sorry to see some of you dissatisfied with my product. I will make it right for you and learn from this mistake. That's a promise. Also, I have apologized to the first girl who tweeted me about her lipstick not being perfect. I reacted very unprofessionally and that's never my intention. I always want you guys to be comfortable sharing your concerns with me. Jacqueline also quote tweeted Raw Beauty Christie's picture of the hairy lipstick and said, if any of you are receiving lipsticks like this, please know that this is not hair. My factory used brand new white gloves to do quality control and they shed all over my product. We switched to rubber gloves two days ago and we'll make sure this never happens again. Someone replied to Jacqueline and said, so you knew it was an issue is what you just said. Jacqueline responded, Yes, I was made aware of this when I started seeing people's photos two days ago, and I've been working quickly to get things fixed. However, there's a video on the Jacqueline Cosmetics website that was there on the launch day showing Jacqueline wearing what appeared to be standard disposable gloves. Another customer tweeted, Two out of four of my lipsticks had these fibers. They are all gritty now, the more I've used them. I'm so, so, so sad. I was so in love with Isla. Now I don't know if they are safe to use. Jacqueline replied, They are 100% safe and made in one of the best labs in the USA. This is embarrassing and infuriating that you're experiencing this. Email help at JacquelineCosmetics.com and I'll give you a refund and replace them for you. Someone else asked Jacqueline, Question, you knew this shed all over your product and still sent it out? Jacqueline said, Of course I didn't know. This didn't happen until we started making hundreds of thousands and I had no idea. A former fan tweeted, My support for you ends today. Not only are you lying, but you think your supporters are stupid. Jacqueline responded, I understand your frustration and not wanting to support me. My info is coming straight from my chemist and it's hard for me to believe this is happening as well. People weren't buying Jacqueline's explanation for the fibers on the lipsticks. So Jacqueline is claiming these are just glove fibers, but I don't know why she thinks having those embedded into her product is okay. She's telling people they are still 100% safe to use, but I doubt most people want those on their lips where they are probably ingesting them. They're 
embedded. Why is she lying, LMAO? They're bad quality and it's gross as hell. How would a black hair come from white gloves, lol? Several people who worked in quality control also spoke up. Quality control for pharmaceuticals take a few products from each batch back to their office to analyze, and then they get tossed when done. And sorters look at every product coming down a converter belt for visual defects and pull off bad ones. You touch, you toss. I assume it's similar for makeup. But touching the packaging seems to be acceptable. Definitely should not be touching the cream part of ones consumers will receive. I grew up around quality control engineers, chemists, and techs. This would never have gotten approval from even a newbie. There's no way. So there are really only three options in my opinion. One, there was no quality control check. Two, there was a quality control check and it was done by someone so blatantly unqualified and incompetent it is startling. Three, there was a quality control check that found these issues and someone made the choice to actively ignore it. None of these are good options and are scary to think about for a product that goes on your lips. If I had bought any of this, I'd be making complaints to the FDA pretty fast. When products of any kind are pulled for quality control testing, they would never in a million years be put back into the batch to be sold. It literally wouldn't make sense for these products to be put back into the batch because they've been handled by human hands and have been put through various kinds of testing, sometimes including age, heat, stability testing, which can alter the chemistry of the product. And using fluffy gloves makes no sense for quality control testing either. Nakia Joy addressed the gloves in her video. I know what goes on in labs, okay? I know the regulations, I know the rules, I know the specifications, I know the sterility of the labs, I know the environment, I know how everything needs to be when makeup and cosmetics are produced. And there are very, very strict regulations that need to be stuck to, to keep things safe, to keep things sanitary, and to keep things sterile. I have never once seen in my entire time cotton gloves being used they always always use nitrile gloves kevin james bennett said jacqueline was lying this is beyond normal lying this is sociopathic jacqueline stands your queen sits on a throne of lies and besides being unsanitary please explain the cost effectiveness of wearing disposable cloth gloves this is lying on a whole new level he also addressed the cotton gloves in the live stream with jen loves reviews they use vinyl they use non-latex gloves in all of these labs all of them. They haven't used right. gloves in labs, in sanitary labs, in like decades. Wow. That's how long it's been. So okay. this is not even possible. The only time that they use cotton gloves is when they're working with equipment that they cannot get fingerprints on. This is working with like metals and things like that you can't get fingerprints on. That's the only time that those kind of gloves are ever used. However, someone found a video from the TV show How It's Made about making lipsticks that showed a lab worker using a white cloth glove to place the component lid on top of the lipstick tube. But lab workers were not wearing cloth gloves in any other part of the production process in the video. Marlena Stell posted a few tweets about the gloves and her relationship with Jacqueline. I'm going to get scorched for speaking out. What the f lab has ever used furry gloves. In my 11 years, I've never once seen furry gloves on production floor. And why is that hair so damn long? If it was a furry glove, it would be very slight fuzz, and it's embedded in the lipstick. I lost respect not because I got financially screwed from Lost Collab. I was cool and moved on until lies like this became regular. Enough is enough. Paying customers deserve the truth. I've walked so many production floors and I've never once seen furry gloves. It's always latex ones I've seen. If white cotton was used, it still wouldn't be embedded in the lipstick and wouldn't be that long of a strand. I was such a supporter and truly loved her and wanted her to succeed. Still do. But I can't sit back with the blatant lies anymore. I've kept my mouth quiet for years now. But after Marlena spoke out on the fibers, Christine Mielke, who runs the top beauty blog Temptalia, published a post on what defects are common in lipsticks. The first photo in the post showed a Makeup Geek lipstick with a few fibers on the top. In the comments for the post, Christine wrote, Yeah, it is funny, since my husband was the one who was like, didn't Makeup Geek have this problem before? And so this post was born. A look through just what is normal across brands and formulas over time to get a better idea of what is abnormal. Marlena first reached out on Twitter, asking for more information on the lipsticks with the issues to check with her internal quality control. She also asked Christine why she didn't bring up the issues when she got the lipsticks in 2016, but the photo was present in the original Temptalia post about the lipsticks. Later that day, she replied to T by Ali's tweet showing the comment Christine left on her post. Makeup Geek had these issues? I've been trying really hard to not be defensive, but that's serious claims to state I had balls of black, black, 
black curly hairs and long blonde hairs as has been shown. If I saw any of those or had complaints from customers, I would have pulled the plug. Don't put my lipsticks in the same category because of lint on top. If it's embedded, then by all means I'll apologize and send refunds and take off shelves. A few days later, Marlena posted a statement on the quality issues. Makeup Geek has always been committed to quality. Here's my response to the quality concerns raised by Temptalia on June 9th, 2019. I apologize for having to address this. However, Makeup Geek's product safety and quality has been in question since the timely posting of the article. When a few people said the statement was unnecessary, Marlena tweeted, Okay, let me address this once. I have no issues with Christine giving less than stellar reviews at all. She's done before, and I never had issue with it because it's fair and she deserves the right to give her opinion honestly. My issue is the timing of the post downplaying legit concerns with customers using them. I messaged her letting know I was seriously concerned and implying defects were okay can be misleading at this time. She stated she spoke to other side and showed no concern about people still using the lipsticks. That, combined with the bold letters in tweet only mentioning Makeup Geek and not other brands caused many people to assume our lipsticks were contaminated, seen here. Her altering the post to say don't use the lipsticks was added after I was strongly stating concern. Christine replied, Marlena, my post always stated, to be clear, I would not recommend purchasing any of Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks at this time until there is more clarity provided by the brand and or new inventory or reformulation available. Marlena said, Christine, I don't want to argue when we've talked on phone. I'm truly sorry the lipstick you received wasn't what it should have been. I have no issues with you ever giving very honest reviews of Makeup Geek or any other brand as you've maintained your integrity. I have to make a statement for Makeup Geek as we were getting serious questioning about us also having contaminated product. I also told you this. It's not about a less than stellar review. It's about the illusion of downplaying safety concerns whether you intended that or not. I've been a personal fan of yours for a while as we both know. We both were OGs and paved the way and I'll respect you till the day I lay. But you know using Makeup Geek as the first name and calling that out boldly on Twitter right after I've been vocal about concerns would stir flames. Back to Jacqueline's tweets. After receiving backlash and mainstream news attention, Jacqueline tweeted, I plan on breaking my silence and addressing the issues regarding my lipsticks very soon. I have been working hard to gather all of the facts and details so I can give you accurate answers. I appreciate you allowing me time to wrap my head around all of this and investigate. And the internet didn't have to wait long for Jacqueline's official response. This is the end of part one. Again, please wait until the end of the series before forming your overall opinion. In the next part, Jacqueline breaks her silence and chemists come forward with their experiences. All that and more coming up in part two.